Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. Today we're going to set up a network firewall using Linux. Um, we're going to log in as root to start. And with any firewall, there's four fundamental things you want to do. Um, Custom-wise, a custom firewall. You want to set up your interfaces. This is your LAN and WAN interfaces. And you also want to set up, set up IP routing. You want to set up a DHCP server as well as a um, your firewall rules and NAT. So um, what we're going to do um, to begin with is I want to show you that I have ENP0S3, that's my LAN, and I have ENP0S8, that's my WAN. And um, here, I'm going to back up the config file for the interfaces. So at C Network Interfaces, I'm going to make a copy of that file uh, with dot back at the end, all right? So a lot of the four concepts uh, I just spoke about apply to all distros. The config file locations and the commands you use to implement it are a little bit different, but as far as the rules and everything, they'll be about the same, all right? During installation, the, this interface was DHCP, and if you have DHCP on your internet connection, leave it at DHCP. If it's static, um, go ahead and put a static address in there. Now, the first thing we want to do is allow hot plug EMP 0s3, and actually, we'll put that. right here, we'll allow hot plug ENP 0s3, and then we want to specify the interface with its name and that it's static. Now we're going to put address 192.168.10.1 with a slash 24 cider, and after doing that you want to say if down and then the interface name, and then if up, all right. Um, let's check that interface. You want to make sure it's up. Okay, it's up and it has its IP address. Uh, let's turn on IP routing next real quick. That's in Etsy, sysctl.conf. You want to uncomment this line here, net.ipv4.ip underscore forward equals one. All right, and a lot of these uh, take effect on a reboot as well. You can edit that, but we don't have to. Um, now, let's set up the DHCP server next. We're going to do app get update. Um, before you install the package, you do want to make sure you have the newest um, repositories. And, you know, make sure you're getting the newest software. And then we're going to do app get install, ISC, DHCP server, okay? and say yes to the dialog and let it install for you. And we'll pause this here because it takes a second. Okay, after that finishes installing, um, this is normal. It tries to start, doesn't have a correct, correct configuration. So you want to first go to Etsy default ISC DHCP server, and you want to uncomment DHCP v 4 conf and the PID file as well. But under interfaces v4, in the quotes there, you want to put your LAN interface name, all right, ENP0S3. And yours will be different. Um, the interface names might be different on your system. All right, now we're going to copy, make another backup of the server's configuration file here. Um, you want to make that same DHCPD conf back. Let's remove the installed one from the package, all right. And now, let's go ahead and quick make one. You need a domain name, and that domain name can be anything. It can just be internally internally used um, or on a wider scale, but it's fine to just name it whatever, as long as it works. Uh, put your guys set up. We're going to do option domain dash name dash servers. And then I'll use 4.2.2.1. You have to have a comma and then a space, and 4.2.2. Uh, is that one too many twos? Yeah, it is. <laughs> all right, 4.2.2.2. All right, and then a semicolon there. Um, now we need to specify our subnet. So um, this is the scope it hands out, and uh, 192.168.10.1. Uh, 
10 zero, you want to have that network ID and then you want to have a net mask and that should be 24 bits, the same as what we put in the LAN interface. Um, have a opening curly brace here, tab enter down twice and tab in. You don't have to, but I prefer to. And this range part tells us what addresses from that subnet this server will lease out to clients, all right? So 10100 through 10200, and then add that with a semicolon, and then add a under under that. I actually want that uh, right under that. Option routers 192.168.10.1. Um, you want to make sure it's the same um, as your LAN interface. And then have another uh, bracket there to wrap it all together. Um, the range from 100 to 200, you can still assign any of the addresses except dot one in that range. So we can assign one through nine, 99, and then we can assign 201 through 254 outside of the, the pool, all right? They just won't be dynamically assigned. These would be things like your servers and other stuff like that. Okay, let's save this. It's, it's very important to run dhcpd-t, and um, if it comes back like that, you don't have any errors, so we are good to go um, as far as DHCP. Um, now, the last thing we have to set up is the um, firewall rules, so I will see you in a sec. So with our firewall rules, um, in Linux distros, it's a little bit different than um, like BSD, if you contrast it with that. We have to go into our boot directory, so etsy init d in this case, and I'm going to make a file, um, fw. It can be whatever you want, but it should be a shell script, a shell program. So we're going to make our interpreter line of bin bash. And here we're going to start with variables and our macros. Um, I'm going to use lan, and I'm going to reference um, the lan interface name, and wan, and reference that the WAN interface. I'm going to also say LAN net equals and then I'm going to reference the the LAN subnet and the, the WAN subnet as well. It's helpful to have that in there. Even if um, we're not going to use it in this set of rules, it's still helpful. In the future you may want to use it for things, um, but for now we're, we're all right there. Um, when you start this program, you want to start with a default state. So we're going to make a comment and say flush um, net filter configuration on boot up. We don't want anything um, there prior to mess up what these rules are doing. Um, so we want to do IP tables dash P, IP, IP tables dash F, IP tables and then dash t nat, and then dash f, and ip tables dash x. So we're flushing everything, we're flushing the nat tables well, and any user created chains. So um, in, in this here, we're going to have a default policy. Uh, in net filter, there is tables and there's chains. The tables are like nat and filter and other things like that. The chains are input, forward, and output in other ones like post routing and stuff. We're dealing here with the filter tables chains. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is say IP tables dash capital P input drop. The, the input chain processes any packets that are coming to a, to a a process that is listening for that on that socket or on that port. In other words, anything destined for this machine, okay? Not being going through this machine, but destined directly for a process on it, okay? And what the policy means is if it doesn't match any rules that we put in the chain, it's going to get a catch all of that rule, so it's going to be dropped. The forward chain is for packets that are being forwarded from one interface to another interface connected to this host. So our LAN to WAN interface, for instance. That governs that. 
and the output is the opposite of the input chain. This is any process sending information out of a socket instead of just receiving information out of a socket. That's all it is. So the forward chain is the only thing that's kind of like an intermediate between the interfaces, not directly destined to the host. So let's focus on that input chain. And we're going to say with, um, firewall destined traffic policy. What we want to do here is append a rule to the input chain. And right now, we want to see anything coming in on the loopback interface. We want to accept that traffic. This next rule is still being appended, but um, we're using a module. That's what M means. We're going to use the state module. And this dash dash state is a switch or argument to that module. And we're going to say related, comma, established. And we're going to J, and J means the target to jump to, or the chain to jump to, or target. We're going to say accept, so we're going to accept that traffic. And the J means the same thing throughout this, when you see me um, type that. Um, this is any related or established traffic. And because, remember, the programs are going to listen on sockets of this, this host, we need to let certain traffic in. So now... If it's coming in, and we're going to utilize the variable or macro with a dollar sign LAN. If it's coming in there and it's um and it's ICMP, what I want to do is accept that traffic, all right? And also, if it's coming into this interface again and it's UDP, um, but specifically going to port 67, that's your DHCP server we set up, we um, want to accept that traffic as well because clients need to get addresses to get out through this machine. All right, our next policy here is going to be our, our network policy for our LAN to WAN traffic. All right, that's what this one's going to be. And what we're saying here is instead of the input chain, we are appending to the forward chain here. And what we want to say on the forward chain is anything coming in to the LAN interface coming from, that's what S means, the layer 3 source address, coming from the LAN net, going, being routed out of the WAN interface, we want to jump to the accept target. Now this is so important because you have to, if you specify interface and the source address needing to match and being routed out of that interface, it helps you prevent spoofing and other network attacks like that. So this is so important. If you're forwarding traffic, it needs to be coming where it should be coming from, your trusted land side. You don't want any other things being forwarded through this machine. Or coming to it, for instance, as well. That's why we limited that service to the LAN interface uh, in the input chain up there. Now, our last uh, rule, and it's very important, is the NAT rule. So this is going to be our network LAN to WAN NAT policy. So this is this is taking all of the computers on the LAN side. And we're changing the source address of those packets going through this machine to be the WAN interface's IP address. So we're going to say IP tables dash T because now we want to work on the NAT table. Here with the other rules, we were working on the filter table and its chains. Now we are working on the NAT table and another chain inside of it. But same thing applies. We want to append this rule to post routing. And we want the source net again to be LAN net. And then wanted, we want it to go out of the WAN interface. And the target is going to be 
masquerade. All right. And one last thing on the forward chain. I got thinking about the NAT and forgot about this. Um, you want to do IP tables A forward, and then we want to still use that state module. Because anything we forward, we don't want random traffic being able to be forwarded. It needs to be part of an existing connection or the correct traffic to match the first rule there that will start a connection. All right. Now we're going to save this file and you want to make this file we just created executable. So change mod U for owner and then we'll add the execute permission. Now we want to go into, well, let's test it first. Let's do dot slash FW and, and make sure it loads everything. So do IP tables dash NV capital L. All right. It loaded everything for us. And uh, one more check in that NAT table, all right? And we'll check that chain post routing. Good. It, it did everything it was supposed to. Um, but that alone isn't enough to make it come up on boot, all right? So we have to find out what run level we're in. Let's do that. We're in 5. We're going to do Etsy RC 5.d. And you want to make LN-S here. You want to make a symbolic link. And um, this is a soft symbolic link, and you want to make it um, from Etsy init DFW to S01FW. And then when you do file on that sim link, it should link back to the file we created in our boot directory. So if we like vi that file, it opens this file up for us. All right. So that will start our firewall rules and flush any additions that may have happened when it was running. So we need to lastly do update rc.d and then the name of the file we created, fw, the program, and say defaults. This hooks it all into the boot system. So when we're booting up, it goes through that boot directory for all those programs and starts them. So that sets that up. And now with those four configurations done, we're going to reboot and just verify that everything works. And I'm going to show you how I verify as well as some programs to monitor your firewall. I'll see you in a second. All right, we're booted back up and logged in. So the first thing I'm going to quick check is IP adder and then check to make sure my addresses are on my LAN and WAN, and they are. Now we're going to do netstat-rn, check the routing table, and we have a default route from DHCP on the WAN. We have our connected route on our LAN interface and on our... WAN interface, that is correct, and what we want to see. Let's do sysctl um, dash a pipe grep to forward. Look for forward. And if we look through this output, it's net.ipv4.ip underscore forward. It's set to 1, and that's what we want to see. Remember, that's because of the sysctl comp file, and the others are because of Etsy network interfaces. Um, let's do systemctl. Oops. System CTL status ISC DHCP ser server. Um, it's active and it's running for about two minutes, almost three. That's good. And also, um, I'll show you two ways. Um, you can do not stat and PUT. We can see DHCPD is running. And we can do SS LU. And that shows you as well. You can add an N on there so it doesn't uh, resolve it. Um, it's running, though, and that's both ways to verify. All right. So let's check our firewall rules. IP tables dash NVL, capital L. And we have all of our rules in there. You can see the packet counters and everything. Okay, that looks really good. And if we do IP tables uh, dash T, NAT, the NAT table, NV, capital L, and it's in there as well. It's already actually changed the source of one packet. So um, now we're going to install TCP dump as well as uh, contract and IP traf ng and if top real quick. I just want to show you that with Linux, you do have a lot of options and different ways to monitor your firewall. And there's actually one more that's um, very good. And let's put that in there as well. Um, it's IPT stat. 
It's a good one too. So um, once those are, are loaded up though, um, let's open up TCP dump first and just look at our, our LAN interface. Okay, we're on our LAN inter... Whoops. There we go. Um, we're on our LAN interface here. And we're gonna pull up our host. And if I ping the gateway's address, so our LAN interface, you can see that the traffic is uh, there and uh, working and everything. Now, if I ping to Google through this machine, you can look and see it got the IP there of 10.2 going to the Google IP address, the request, and then the reply coming back from Google. Um, let's look at the other side so we can see the NAT in action, the, uh, the WAN side. And we'll do that ping again. All right. See now how it's 187? That's because the EMP0S8, the post writing chain rule, changed it to that address. Now, uh, real quick, um, if we look at IP stat, you can see that these are the connections going through the firewall. All right. Some of them are terminating on the firewall and some are going through. Um, if you look at if top with these switches here, and you can look at the LAN interface. Again, if we, if we do a ping, you'll, you'll be able to see the traffic there. You can also see that um, you would be able to see port numbers if I was doing web sessions and everything like that as well. Um, and contract is a good way to, uh, what was it, contract, um, dash capital L, I think. This is a good way to get the raw information and do things like if I want to look for ICMP, I can grep for ICMP and pull um, all of that out. So um, that's one way to do it as well. Just remember it's a capital L. And the last one that's very important is IPTRAF, IPTRAFNG. Um, what this does is uh, looks at traffic going through the firewall and everything. So if we do ping dash T Google, um, this does a continuous ping. If we look at IP traffic monitor real quick, let's look at the LAN interface and you can see traffic. And if you have TCP connections, you would see those up there. Um, and you can look at general information for each type of packet, IPv4 or 6. If it's not IP the on the interfaces, it's a very good program. And uh, you have different breakdowns of the traffic here, as well as on the WAN. I find this program very interesting, actually. Um, you can see by packet size even, you can break it down on those interfaces. We have one to 75 byte payloads in our packets going through, but and that's how big the packet is, is 75 bytes. Um, the LAN station monitor, um, it's good with Ethernet, of course, because then you can see at layer two how often the clients are sending frames on the broadcast domain. So there's interesting things to, to be had with this tool. And um, that's a lot about how we monitor it, though. And that's the four things you got to do to set up a firewall with Linux. And a, a lot of those concepts carry right over into other distros, okay?
So with all that, though, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, it's Tyler with T-Tech. Thank you for viewing and have a very nice day.